James, are you there? The key wasn't working. Why? Oh, I changed the lock because the kid was noisy. What are you thinking? This apartment is a rental. Why would you do that? I have the old key, so if we leave, I'll put it back, so it's okay. James probably thinks changing locks is a piece of cake because of work. But why did he suddenly need to change the house key? Hey, just open the door for now. You guys have to stay outside from today. You can't enter the house. What are you thinking? Don't joke, let us in quickly. I told you. I changed the lock because the kid was noisy. I've been thinking that the kid cries and screams right away. With this, my work fatigue will double. So from now on, after dinner and a bath, sleep outside at night. Sleep outside? Where should we sleep? You guys should sleep in the car. It's popular these days. James hung up before finishing the conversation. I frantically pressed the intercom button, but James didn't respond. I had been feeling stressed by James for a while now. If he was going to pull something like this, I decided I'd get back at him. Understood. We'll sleep in the car, but don't complain. Ah, don't bother. You don't even have to come back. Even though he hadn't responded until a moment ago, James reacted only to my words about sleeping in the car and replied. Perhaps he thinks there's nothing I can do. I also believe I'm not capable of much. However, when I take action, situations unfold in ways no one imagined, and James is about to hit rock bottom. My name is Luna. I'm 22 years old, working part-time, and have no job experience. The reason for that is my decision to get pregnant with Aria when I was 19. I want to have a baby. Saying you want to have. My parents were at a loss because of my determination, especially my mother, who strongly opposed it. They weren't simply against my pregnancy due to my youth. The reason my parents were troubled was that the father of the baby, who later became my husband, James, was a 21-year-old high school graduate working as a non-regular employee. Moreover, the fact that we met through a dating app added to my parents' anxiety. We won't rely on mom and dad, we'll raise the child on our own. We'll even repay the money spent on university. You never listen when you make up your mind. Fine, do as you please. But don't forget those words. My persistence eventually convinced my parents, and we somehow obtained permission for marriage. However, James's parents couldn't be persuaded, and James ended up estranged from them. I'm sorry, it's because of me. It's not your fault. Let's work hard together until we can raise the child properly and manage our lives. Eventually, they'll forgive us. James is often seen as unserious by those around him, and even when he flirted with me, I didn't have a great impression. However, the more we talked and got involved, the more I realized he had a serious side. My eyes didn't deceive me, and when James learned about my pregnancy, his personality underwent a complete transformation. He became a serious person who prioritized me and our child above all else. The apartment is a bit cramped, and it might be tough, but I'll work hard. Please bear with it. After getting married, we rented a small apartment together. I quit university, and James took up a job in the field. James, being young, energetic, diligent at work, and sociable, seemed well-liked by his colleagues. Moreover, thankfully, the company's president knew about our struggles due to having a child, and he raised James's salary a little. With no money, 
we had no wedding or honeymoon, and life was challenging. However, James worked tirelessly for me and our unborn child, and I felt incredibly happy. About six months after our marriage, our daughter Aria was born. When will you bring Aria to visit next? What? Didn't I take her three days ago? Three days ago. I want to see her. My mother often calls, urging us to let her meet Aria. When I announced my pregnancy, she was initially worried, but apparently, once the grandchild is born, they become adorable. Here, Aria's diapers and toys. I've already said it's unnecessary. And yet, she buys various things for my daughter without me asking. Where did the promise that we would raise the baby on our own go? Although the promise isn't entirely broken. This isn't support. I'm doing it because I want to. Thank you. I'll take them. While my mother buys Aria's things based on her own judgment, I refrain from making requests related to parenting or married life. It's an unspoken rule. Despite the challenges, we managed to get by, and Aria is now three years old. James's diligent work over three years led to a salary increase, and I started working part-time when Aria began attending kindergarten. Finally saying goodbye to this small apartment, ha! Huh? You feel a little nostalgic when leaving, don't you? With our increased income, we were able to move from the small apartment to a spacious condominium where the three of us could live comfortably. I thought we could continue our happy life smoothly like this. However, since around the time of this move, dark clouds began to gather over our once happy life. James usually comes home around dinner time, and whenever that time approaches, I become restless. I'm home. Welcome back. Would you like to eat first, or take a bath? Let's have dinner first. But I don't have much appetite, so a smaller portion is fine. James silently eats the meal I prepared and then heads straight to the bedroom after taking a bath. This alone might be due to work fatigue, I think. The next day, as James's return time approaches, I find myself feeling restless again. I'm home. Welcome back. Would you like to eat first, or take a bath? James glances around the living room before giving me a stern look. It seems today is one of bad days. You should tidy up the room more. Aria's toys are scattered everywhere. After a tiring day at work, it's hard to relax in a room like this. I'm sorry. Today has been busy. Busy? Your part-time job ends by noon, right? Were you slacking off? No, it's not like that. James scolds me about the messy room, but there are only a few of Aria's toys on the table. Besides, those toys are in the middle of being played with, and Aria is just in the bathroom. However, on days like this, if I retort to James, he'll raise his voice even more, making things more complicated. I don't want to argue in front of Aria. So, I always bite my tongue and come up with plausible excuses or apologize immediately. Still, this is relatively mild compared to the worst off days. Sometimes, during those rock-bottom moments, I can't help but retort to James. The next day was one of those rock-bottom moments. Hey, how much mess are you going to make? As soon as he comes home, James yells at Aria, who is playing with her toys. The toys aren't scattered as much as he claims. Aria, suddenly yelled unreasonably, looks like she's about to cry. James, the toys aren't that messy, are they? Ha! Huh. When I come home, I want everything to be neatly organized so I can enjoy my meal comfortably. 
Clear up this mess. What are you talking about? My exasperated expression seems to displease James. The room is messy because of these toys. No. Arya bravely speaks up and clings to James's clothes. But he ignores her desperate resistance, takes the toy away, and slams it onto the floor, breaking it. Get rid of this junk. James forcefully slams the living room door shut and leaves the house. He probably intends to have dinner alone outside. I comfort Arya, who is now sobbing. Let's go buy a new one tomorrow. I wonder how I managed to stay married to someone who does such terrible things. But there's a reason for it. I'm sorry about yesterday. I bought a new toy, so will you forgive daddy? That's the exact same one I got today. Ha! Huh? Really? I thought it was something Arya wanted before. Looks like I missed out. James doesn't always treat us poorly. He understands Arya's preferences and, on good days, takes good care of her. Despite his bad moments, he's not all bad, and his attitude can change significantly from day to day, leaving me puzzled and confused. That's why I get anxious every day when it's time for James to come home. Is today a good day? Or a bad day? It feels like drawing lots for James's mood. Even though there are kind days, the impression from being scolded tends to stick, and Arya has started to dislike James a little. I'm home. Oh, Arya, are you playing with your toys? Will you play with Daddy too? No. Don't say that. If it's about breaking the toy, Daddy already apologized, right? Go away. You smell bad. Children are straightforward with their words, unlike adults. As I prepare dinner, I overhear their conversation and can't help but laugh. Don't laugh. It's shocking to be called smelly by Aria. Well, I guess I do smell like sweat and oil. Well, that's true. But isn't it because you use too much perfume to cover up that smell? It ends up being sickly sweet and overpowering. Ha! Ah, maybe I overdo the perfume. I didn't notice it myself. Today felt like a good day. My life is a game of James's mood roulette. But just as there are enjoyable days, there are also unpleasant ones. I've learned not to worry too much about James's attitude. Maybe I've unconsciously accepted that I can't rely on my mother for marital matters. However, lately, consecutive bad days have made it harder to ignore. Daddy smells bad. I work hard for you. What's with calling me smelly? Stop it. Today seems like one of those bad days. James yelled at Aria, making her cry. You're so noisy. Stop crying over everything. It's because you were yelling, James. You're noisy too. Don't talk back. Ouch. James punched me hard in the stomach, leaving me momentarily breathless and collapsing in pain. Seeing this, Arya cried even louder. That's why you keep going on and on, right? The house is a mess. Unbeknownst to me, today marks three consecutive bad days. Yesterday, James expressed dissatisfaction with the dinner I made. Like windshield wipers deflecting raindrops on a car's front glass, he swept his arm across the table, clearing away all the food. Aria, of course, burst into tears. I sighed as I looked at the scattered meals and broken dishes on the floor. Today, I wonder how it will be. I pray that I won't draw four consecutive bad days. 
The next day, it's Sunday, and Aria's kindergarten is closed. James and I also have the day off from work. I'm thinking of buying clothes for Aria. Will James come along? No. I have plans with friends. Oh, I see. And even though you have plans with friends, can we use the car? Someone will pick me up, so it's fine. I carefully observed James's expression, feeling uncertain about whether it's a good or bad day. Will you be home late? I don't think it'll be that late. I might be late, so you and Aria can relax outside. It seems like a good day today. Aria and I went shopping in the afternoon, had dinner outside, and returned home. It's around 8 p.m., and since James said he'd be late, I assume he hasn't arrived yet. I inserted the key into the lock. Huh? The key won't go in. I checked if I had the wrong key. It was the right one. Maybe something is stuck in the keyhole? I examined it more closely. The shape of the keyhole seemed different. And upon closer inspection, the doorknob was new. I couldn't comprehend what was happening, feeling confused and unsure of what to do. Aria looked anxious too. Suddenly, laughter echoed from inside. It appears James is home, and someone else is with him. I pressed the intercom button, deciding to ask James to unlock the door. James, are you there? The key didn't work. Oh, I changed the lock because the kid was noisy. What? You changed the lock? This apartment is a rental. Why would you do that? I have the old key. If we move out, I'll put it back. James works in construction-related jobs. Although it's not specifically related to locks, he has experience handling tools and knowledge, so changing locks should be a piece of cake if he looks it up or asks around. But why the sudden need to replace our house key? Hey, just open the door for now. Starting today, you both sleep outside. You won't be allowed inside. What? What are you thinking? Stop joking and let us in. Aria is here too. Didn't I say? I changed the lock because the kid is noisy. She's been crying and making a racket all the time. It's doubling my work fatigue. So after dinner and a bath, you'll sleep outside. Sleep outside? Where exactly? We can't rely on our mothers, and we can't stay in a hotel every day, can we? Sleep in the car. It's trendy these days, isn't it? James hung up the intercom even though the conversation wasn't over yet. I frantically pressed the button, but James didn't respond. It seems today was another bad day, a really bad one. I can't leave Arya outside like this, so I pounded on the door and shouted. James, open up! Arya is here! My loud voice attracted the attention of the neighbor who partially opened their door to check outside. It's embarrassing to be seen like this. I quickly decided to leave the scene, but before doing so, I wanted to make something clear to James. Fine. We'll sleep in the car, but don't you dare complain. Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to come back. He hadn't responded until now. But James reacted to the mention of sleeping in the car. I've had good James days and bad James days, and I've been torn about how to handle his behavior. Even on good days, the stress from James's outbursts has been building up. If he's going to push me this far, maybe it's time for me to take action. Determined to give James a taste of his own medicine, 
I headed to the car with Arya. Once inside, I messaged James again, asking why he did this. Why did you change the lock? I told you, because the kid is noisy. And you said we should sleep outside after dinner and a bath. How long is that going to last? Indefinitely. I need to rest properly at night, so you both sleep outside. What about the new key? I'm not giving it to you. What about my work in picking up Arya? Figure it out. Adjust your schedule to fit mine. With each message from James, my anger grew. I drove with Arya still in the car to a certain place. When I arrived at my destination, I put Arya to sleep in the back seat and decided to take a nap by reclining the driver's seat. All that was left was to wait for someone to call out to me. About an hour later, I woke up to the sound of someone tapping on the car window. What are you doing here? I had stopped the car right in front of the police station. If a woman in her twenties and a young child were sleeping in the car, it was natural for the police to approach. Actually, I explained to the police that James had changed the locks on our house and kicked me out. Going directly to the police station might not have been effective, as they might dismiss it as a family matter. So, the car camping in front of the police station was a way to highlight my distress and increase the chances of the police taking action. Even the exchange of messages with James, where I had to suppress my anger, was part of the plan to show evidence of being locked out by James. The police listened to my story and saw the messages, which led them to agree to accompany me back home. Surely, if the police were involved, James would open the door. I expected that once the police talked to James, he would change his attitude. But things took an unexpected turn. When we arrived at the house, two officers were with me, and I confidently rang the doorbell. Back already? Could you finally open the door? Oh, my friend already left, so I'll let you in today. Perhaps due to my position, the doorbell camera didn't capture the police officers. James obediently opened the front door. Wait, why are the police here? He noticed the two officers standing behind me and widened his eyes in surprise. You kicked me out, remember? James was clearly shaken, as evident from his trembling voice. Late at night, we found a woman and a child sleeping in a car so we escorted them home. Since when do the police get involved in marital matters? Our concern was for the safety of the young woman and child sleeping in the car. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's dangerous for a young woman and a kid to camp in a car. So, can you leave now? Thanks for your help. James spoke rapidly, clearly wanting the police to leave. I understood. Having the police show up at your doorstep would make anyone eager for them to leave. But James seemed overly desperate. It wasn't just me. The police officers also seemed wary of him. Separate from the car camping situation, we'd like to ask a few questions. Is that okay? What? An interrogation? I hate dealing with the police. I won't cooperate. Understood. Then we'll ask your wife. Does your husband always smell sweet, like he does now? Yes, James works in a hands-on job, so he often smells like sweat or oil. He always wears this perfume to cover it up. Forgive me, but does your husband ever become moody or violent? Yes. Sometimes he changes completely. I see. Well, would your husband be willing to come to the station with us? What? No way. James became even more desperate. 
The understanding seemed to be happening only between the police and James, leaving me out of the loop. It's voluntary, so we won't force you, but would you be willing to show us around the house if you don't come to the station? The officer's authoritative tone surprised me, and I glanced back and forth between the police officer and James. James seemed to resign himself to something and was led away by one of the officers. The remaining officer gently explained the situation to me. I apologize for the sudden turn of events. Why was James taken away? We're not entirely sure yet, but there's a possibility he's using illegal drugs. What? The sweet smell and personality changes are typical symptoms. The words felt surreal, and my mind went blank. We'd like to hear from you as well, so could you come to the station tomorrow? Understood. The other officer left, and now it was just Arya and me. Since I couldn't enter the house, I called my mother. Hello, Mom. Can I go there right now? Something serious has happened. My mother understood the urgency, and Arya and I headed to my parents' house. The next day, after leaving Arya with my parents, I went to the police station. Apparently, James had confessed overnight. He had been obtaining drugs from an old friend, who also visited our house yesterday. The reason for starting drug use was simply because the friend invited him, quite an inexplicable motive. Perhaps our improved financial situation played a role? Until now, James had used drugs outside, away from home, before returning. However, to reduce the risk of being caught by others and increase frequency, he wanted to use them at home. So, he changed the locks, effectively locking us out. I see, that explains it. Listening to the police, I understood James's mood swings better. His recent downcast days and violent behavior weren't due to work. Maybe the increased frequency of drug use caused those off days. His incomprehensible action of changing the locks and kicking us out must have been a result of his emotional turmoil. What will happen to James now? Most likely, he'll be charged, and there will be a criminal trial. The sentence will determine his punishment. I had hoped the police would caution James, and if his behavior didn't change, I'd consider divorce. But I never expected James to get arrested. For a moment, I felt like I'd done something wrong, but realizing that James was the one in the wrong, thanks to the police, was a relief. If I hadn't noticed, Arya and I would have continued living with him. My judgment had been clouded. Returning home from the police station, I had a discussion with my parents. Even though you opposed my marriage, we didn't imagine it would come to this. Sorry for insisting on our views. We couldn't have foreseen this either. It doesn't mean our views were entirely correct. Unexpected as it was, Arya and I would now live with my parents, free from unspoken rules. I could rely on my parents, and they showered Arya with affection. Without James's yelling, Arya spent her days happily. With James gone, I was free from his mood swings, and life returned to normal. Afterward, James was sentenced to imprisonment. It seems his friend was also arrested. Naturally, I divorced James, and he lost his job as well. It's regrettable to repay the kindness of our company president with such an outcome. James will be released from prison in three years, but life won't be easy for him afterward. When I filed for divorce, I requested alimony. The requested amount was $8,000, not excessively high. However, considering James is unemployed and has a criminal record, finding work might be challenging. Moreover, James has severed ties with both his parents, leaving him with no one to rely on. 
even $8,000 would be a significant sum for him. Three years later, one day after James's release from prison, he ambushed me in front of my parents' house. Returning from shopping with Arya, I unexpectedly ran into him. Luna. James, you came out from there. Listen, can't we start over? James, do you not remember what you did to Arya and me? You yelled at her, hit me, and, worst of all, changed the locks to keep us out. I'm sorry, but I've learned my lesson. Sorry, but no matter how much you've changed, I can't trust you. We can't live together anymore. Arya probably wants to live with me again. Who's this man? James froze at Arya's unexpected question. Arya had lived with James until she was three, so it wouldn't be strange if she recognized his face. However, whether it was because she enjoyed our current life or had no positive memories of James, Arya didn't realize he was her father. Living together is difficult, right? We've already separated, so please don't come to see us. Wait! How am I supposed to survive alone? It's your own doing. You'll have to manage on your own. I led Arya inside, leaving James behind. Since then, James seemed to give up and never visited us again. Arya and I now live peacefully at my parents' house. I found a job shortly after the divorce. Arya has grown into a mature elementary school student. Looking forward to Arya's continued growth, I head to work with enthusiasm each day. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time in the next video.